Dear Santa, For Christmas this year, I'd really like a sexy, high-end DLP printer. Hang on, I've already got one here. It's the Raze 3D DF2 DLP resin printer. Let's take a look. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, from the off, this is not a printer for everyone. This product is squarely aimed at those with deeper than average pockets. Professionals like dentists, engineers, jewelers, etc. But that doesn't stop the rest of us drooling at the features offered by this amazing device. Secondly, and importantly, Race3D have sponsored me to review this printer. But, as my regulars will know, I love DLP so much, I would have paid them. And if I spot something I don't like, you know I'm going to say something. This is how the printer arrives. It's extremely well packaged. We're talking here about a company that cares so much about their products that they've created a video showing you how to unpack the content. And if you don't want to watch the video, their website also gives you step-by-step -step instructions. There's even an encyclopedia, sorry, I mean instruction manual, which, before you get terrified, is mostly made up of different languages. And let me tell you, it's big. Surprisingly big and heavy. It's a serious bit of kit, and it demands its own workspace. The huge door swings open to the left, and first impressions don't disappoint. It looks like it's got a V8 engine in there. The load capacity of this thing is 200 kilograms. That's like four supermodels or my wife's handbag. This is a HEPA filter to screen out those nasty nifs. And this, well, this is a job done properly, and I'll cover that more in a moment. The generous proportions mean that this DLP has a capacious build volume. There's two USB ports on the front for manually uploading your print files. The menu screen is massive and gorgeous. It's what the Starship Enterprise would look like if it was a printer. It also has Wi-Fi and also Ethernet connectivity via a port at the rear. And whilst we're admiring a larger than average backside, we can also see a DIN socket that connects to the auto feeder. There's also the power point and a clunky on off switch. The user interface is intuitive and simple to use. And you'll need to access this just after unpacking to move the build plate and access the resin tray. The UI is also clever enough to allow for adjustments to the print layout, duplicate prints and more. The build plate is the biggest I've come across on a DLP printer, which is fitting for a mid-range printer. Taking it off the printer is a bit of high-tech fun. Yes, it locks and unlocks via the menu. It's heavy, as you'd expect with industrial quality. Incredibly, it has a built-in memory chip that tells the next machine, such as a wash or curing station, what's on the plate and how to treat it. The resin tray is released by pressing these side buttons, and it's replaced by locking it in place with a tiny push. Trust me, it's a solid fit. The tray itself is plastic with an almost strangely protruding spout that doesn't quite line up with the corner, but the inner tapering will easily accommodate proper resin flow. There's also foam strips on the bottom to cushion it, but also to accommodate the liner, which uses something called air peel technology. Now this thing hasn't got dual linear rails. It's got f off dual linear rails. These things are massive and generously spaced, increasing arm stability. It's very impressive. Now I tend to hate auto feed systems, as they hardly ever work or typically disappoint. But with Ray's 3D, I took a lot more interest. It sits separately and the setup is easy thanks to a super friendly video. And of course, you'll need the appropriate resin bottle. I know what you're thinking, another brand forcing you to use their own proprietary resins that just can't really cut it. Well, yes and no. They've got their own high detail resins, which I'll come to later, but they've teamed up with industry experts to give you the best. 
Look, there's Liquorate Wax Castable Resin, which I've previously reviewed, which is great news for my fellow metal casters. There's also Loctite, Ultra Cure 3D, and enough goodies to keep you busy pretty much forever. Each bottle has an RFID chip on the bottom, and this tells the printer information about the bottle's contents, such as the resin type and even the weight of the content. The LED entertains my chart-like brain, glowing red when the bottle isn't fitted properly and green when everything is okay. And it actually works. It's not fast and it wouldn't allow me to film filling with the door open. But it does work and moreover, it doesn't overfill, but instead dispenses resin to a practical defined working level. It comes with an extra peristaltic pump and hoses, allowing you to cleanly switch resins without the risk of contamination, which is critical when you're using expensive speciality resins. Quite honestly, the only thing that could make this setup better is if it had a built-in heater. Hang on, actually it does. This is a chamber heater, and of course it's controlled via the user interface with a simple slider that selects temperatures up to 40 degrees Celsius. When it comes to slicers, you have one option, and that's Idea Maker, Ray's3D's own proprietary slicer software. These are often a bit naff, but this one feels slick and professional. In the brief time that I've used it, I found it more than capable. It even makes use of a built-in camera that allows you to remotely monitor the print. It's not the best camera in the world, but it does the job, though it doesn't seem to allow for time-lapse videos, which a lot of folks enjoy sharing. However, the massive benefit of this resin and slicer combo is that you never have to worry about settings. You don't need to trawl the internet looking for an ideal exposure time or a lift distance or whatever because the slicer already has this information, which is double checked via the RFID chip in the auto feeder. This is printing made simple. It's truly plug and play. However, control freaks like me will be delighted to learn that you can duplicate and amend profiles, allowing you to tweak those numbers. When it comes to build plate leveling, you don't. Auto calibration sensors level the plate perfectly for use. Saving the best until last, this is a DLP printer. It uses a projector rather than an LCD mask, and these are much more precise and accurate. DLPs don't have edge blur, which can happen with other technologies, so the results are crisper. Add to this the fact that the DLP projector engines can last up to 10 times longer than LED arrays, as well as using less electricity whilst doing so, you can see why I love them so much. However, if you're used to monochrome screens, you will find DLPs a bit slower. With that said, Race3D do have profiles for certain resins which incorporate faster printing, without any apparent loss of quality. Though unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to test these for this video. Now people are going to ask me, is it a 16K or is it 18 microns of resolution? And honestly, that's impossible to answer. DLPs and LCDs are measured differently. So don't compare spec sheets, compare results instead. So the real question is, how does it print? I use the provided high detail apricot resin and it lives up to its name. The bed edition was very good and in the hand, all the prints that follow looked absolutely stunning. The color showcasing the obvious high definition. Dramatically magnifying the prints as I always do is in many ways to do them an injustice as they look blocky like Lego construction. And of course, technically, they are just that. Every print from every printer is the same, one pixel built on top of the next. But only DLPs have the crispness and precision to focus so sharply on each pixel. These prints were made using the Idea Maker recommended grayscale setting which softens these edges slightly. 
There's also an antique alias in setting, and I'm sure if time had allowed, I could have tinkered to something as near perfection as my workshop has ever seen. But time, of course, is always the enemy. So what do I think of the Raze 3 d DF2 DLP resin printer? Well, this is a sponsored video, and my love of DLPs is well known, but I wouldn't be me if I couldn't find fault. So, um, this mote of dust is offensive, and it's been a persistent nuisance. Okay, not really, but it's genuinely tricky to find fault in what is beyond doubt the highest quality printer I've reviewed to date. At a push and being very picky, the power switch might be better positioned on the front as access would be tricky in a crowded environment. The camera could be a better spec, especially if time-lapse video was available, and I suspect that could be an easy firmware fix if there was sufficient interest. And honestly, that's about it. I get that many people will be disappointed by the proprietary restrictions of slicer and resins, but really, the slicer does what you need it to do, and the choice of resins is impressive, encompassing expert brands. And you'll never have to worry about those settings again, unless you actually want to tweak those profiles. As I said right at the start of this video, this is not a print for everyone. This is an industrial grade tool. It's built like it will last forever, the quality is top end, and all the T's have been crossed and the I's dotted. Ray's 3D call it the complete package, and it is especially with the great sundries and support you get with this printer. Honestly, this video and the meagre photographs I've shown are not enough to do justice to this amazing machine. If you're in the market for a high-grade DLP, you'd be foolish to overlook the Raze 3D DF2. And that's it for this review, guys. I hope you've enjoyed looking at this high-tech wonder as much as I have. So take care, guys. And thanks for watching.